why you're looking a bit more chipper. Yes. Looks like that collar fits you snugly enough. Nice bit of work, even if I do say so myself. Tight, I hope. The collar, I mean. Oh, not to worry. Every dog has to get used to its leash. In the meantime, your next stop will be Magister William. All passengers have to be registered in the ship's manifest, and he's the chap in charge of the logs. You'll find him on the other side of this deck, in the officers' quarters. Why, for my peace of mind, of course. Why don't you try casting one of those source spells of yours? See what happens. Currents of magic surge inside you, boiling, bursting, then breaking, only to fade back into your soul. My, look at the concentration on your face. All will, but no result. There you have it. See? The collar's function. It neuters you of sorts. Makes you unable to cast source. For your own peace of mind, of course. Yours and the whole world's. Is he? Oh well. Some problems simply sort themselves, don't they? She frowns and peers at you closely, resting the back of one hand on your forehead and taking your pulse with the other. Hmm. Delusions such as these are rare, but not unheard of. I recommend a cup of mulled wine and another night's sleep. Just take it easy. I'll need to write to headquarters right away. I'll need to write to headquarters right away. Good gods! There's... there's been a murder here!
Behind the Magister, a bloodied mass lies in a heap. Gore and limbs lie at odd angles. You can't make out a face amid the mess. There's been a murder. A sorcerer was killed by one of your own. Lucky you were busy getting your collar fitted at the time, or you'd be a suspect like the rest of them. Waters is investigating. She'll figure out who did it. Always does. It's a small ship. His name was Finn. Oddball. Looked to me like he saw something he wished he hadn't before he came here. We'll find out who did it, one way or another. No lesions, no trauma. It was bled by magic. No known associates. In fact, he seemed quite averse to spending time with the others. Ugly sight, isn't it? Burns me up this happened under our protection. We're extremely lucky no void walk and followed the source that did this. Finn didn't see it like that. He was desperate for us to help him. Two things scared the living daylights out of him. His own shadow and his own source. We'll find out who did this. Speaking of... She looks up at you with a mirthless smile. I was on duty in your room when the murder happened. You were asleep the whole time. Didn't even stir. You're one of the only indisputably innocent people on the ship. Unless you can commit murder in your sleep, of course. Finn was killed by Sauce. If a Magister could do that, there wouldn't be a Magister. It looks more like a passenger managed to slip their collar. And the rest, well, you see the evidence in front of you. Listen, I could use someone to keep their ears open among the passengers. Sometimes they clam up in front of a uniform. Bring me a good lead, and I'll throw in a shiny gold coin for you. How about that? Not in here, it isn't. You let me know if you hear anything. Whoever did this is dangerous.
A no doesn't become a yes over time, you know. You are <clears throat> wife. Would you please tell this very charming gaggle of not at all brat like babes that I am by no accounts this loser woman, nor do I sing, in fact. I'm deathly, deathly allergical. How very correct you are, spouse of mine. Madame Josephine Gribbles de Peeve refuses to be confused with anyone else. What? What's so funny? Her pinched face cracks into a great grin, and she shoos the children away from her with a laugh. Yeah, okay, you found me out. Go on and git, and maybe I'll sing you something when I'm good and ready. She turns to you, dark-eyed and dirty-haired, and smiles flatly. Gotta keep ourselves entertained, haven't we? You presume right. Thanks, but I already belong to an elite and exclusive ship gang. We play ball every day after lunch. You're too soft for it. You take care, though. Nope. Trying not to find anything out, either. Ignorance is bliss. The utterer, the better. Suddenly, her eyes cloud to an unnatural black. Greyish veins run down her face, and her mouth tightens into a cruel sneer. As quickly as they came, the clouds clear. She smiles as though no change came over her. Good luck, Chief. Just skip to the part where I read. Do you know Lo, sir? She's a really good singer. I'm better, though. Listen. La, 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 la. What are you trying to hear, anyway? I'll tell you if you can hear. You're a human, like me. That means we're friends already. My mum told me not to make friends with lizards and elves and dwarves and stuff. But I think they're okay. Wow! You look cool. I like your hair. I like your eyes. I like your colour. I have one too. Sufferable, surely. What are you trying to hear anyway? I'll tell you if you can keep an it elf quiet sits tucked away in a dark spot, lazily rolling dice onto the surface of a barrel. They sound like the dry cackling of an old witch. Snake eyes. She chuckles. I bet that's just what they'll look like. She shakes her head. Game for one, I'm afraid. Rolling dice? Deciding fates. Don't worry, honey. It isn't yours. She looks you up and down with the merest tint of a coy smile on her lips. Never say never, though.
put a knuckle in it. I'm trying to... She smiles contemptuously. They don't care about us. Like Just a kitten in a corner, aren't we? One of us picking our own. They're picking us off one by one. Can we just skip to the part where I reassure you and you shut up? You think me mad? Mad? No. Insufferable? Surely. What are you trying to hear? A scruffy man lounges against the wall with scarred arms folded. A sly smile playing on his face, he stares across at the Magister guarding him. Noticing you, he straightens and beckons for you to come closer. Watch your back, new fish. There's a murderer on board, and I'd bet three months' pay it's this tramp you found. There's nothing else I can make, Your Majesty. Turnips and water are all I was given. Unacceptable. Rolling his eyes at the Magister's warning, the man named Ifan beckons again. He leans in and adjusts your collar with a sharp tug, balancing its weight so it no longer presses unpleasantly on your neck. He winks. Don't you get saucy with me when you clearly don't know the first thing about sauce. Pinches less that way, right? Hocking a phlegmy gobbit in your general direction, the sullen magister settles back to his task of glowering at Ifan. And now, you. We used to know each other, more's the pity. I was his commander many, many, many moons ago. Isn't that right, Vic? Standing far back from Ifan, the tight-faced magister draws one finger across his throat in an elaborate fashion, but says nothing. Ifan grins, flashing pointed white teeth. Same as he was at 14 years old. Only difference is, somebody gave him a bigger sword, and now he's Johnny Big Pants. Long story. Maybe I'll tell you about it in the joy. Away from interested parties. No. The dead man, Finn, is it? I'd no business with him. And I wouldn't put a man down without good reason. He glances over at Magister Victor, who's staring back at him with pointed intensity. Damn shame sheer annoyance isn't reason enough. The joy. I've heard a lot. Nothing good. No surprise there, since Bishop Alexander runs the show. Wonder if we'll get to meet the Ringmaster himself. Not interested in the son of the Divine himself. The <laughs> I don't blame you one bit. But Vic here will blow a blood vessel if he hears you talking like that. What are you conspiring about over there? You! What's your name? Ah, oh, don't mind him. Vic's just got a bee in his bonnet. And that bee is me. Name! Magister Victor looks at you suspiciously, then scrawls something illegible down in a tiny notebook. He scowls at you as he stows the notebook back in his voluminous robes. Away with you, at once. Ifan performs an elaborate pantomime of keeping quiet, one finger in front of his lips, as he leans back against the wall. Maybe that has the Magister's more concern than your appetite. Don't you get saucy with me when you clearly don't know the first thing about sauce. Sing a song. I know you can. I forgot how to sing. I did. Seems to me you should be a little more afraid. 
There's a killer about, after all. Till overboiling a bit of cabbage becomes a crime, I shall hold my head steady. Never thought you'd end up a prison guard, Vic. That right. I always knew you'd turn out rot and Ben Nest. Your kind always hung closest to our divine. A broad dwarf sits totally upright on the bench, eyes closed, palms face up on his knees. His beard is a cascade of meticulous plaits, each one braided through with golden medallions. He raises an eyebrow as you approach, but doesn't open his eyes. Listen up, ghetto. You hear that? The ship, of course. A wave of sound washes over you. The unintelligible chatter of your shipmates, the groaning of wood from floor to ceiling, the boom, crash and crackle of waves around you, complaints from the sea itself. And? I've seen more appetizing things right. coming out of plague stricken pigs. There's, there's nothing else you can do. Your Eh! A common sort of sound, isn't it? Where there's talk, there's health. That's all you hear, though. Listen close. There now, just like that. Squeak! When you clearly don't know the first thing about sauce. Aha! His eyes snap open as his countenance breaks into an expression of joy. One great paw claps you on the back, the other catches you before you lose your footing. There, you heard that, didn't you? I knew it. I knew it. Ah, this is good news, ghetto. Good news. No, you beautiful idiot. That wasn't any rat. It was the wheel. Squeaks whenever the helmsman jerks it clockwise, which means we're heading east. Burn my beard. That means if we've been traveling for... Yes, only 10.34 nautical miles to Fort Joy. Captain, actually. And that figure tells me we're getting close to the... The dwarf leans back from the table and strokes his beard, gold medallions jingling merrily. His eyes... That'll be all. Thank ye kindly, ghetto. There has been a murder, Your Majesty. Maybe that has the Magister's more concern than your appetite. You one of them? A Divine Order loyal. They killed a sorcerer, you know. They'll hide the evidence well enough, but make no mistake. That right. I always knew you'd turn out rotten, Ben Nest. Your kind always hung closest to our Divine, like wolves around a campfire. Got this wolf on a leash now. As soon as the Inquisitor gets here, we'll hang you right over the side of this ship with him. <laughs> 